Hey friends, it's Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel Terry. I'm the author of four young adult fantasy books. Information will be in the description box down below if you're interested. In today's video, I will be sharing my review of Talon Sister by Jen Williams. I actually bought a copy of this book, which I no longer have because I donated it to the library and the reason that I bought a copy is because none of the libraries in my entire state system had a copy because at the time I found this book you could not buy it in America for some reason. But the blurb instantly captured my attention and I knew I wanted to read it so I bought a copy from the UK from Blackwells whom I have bought books from before. I have no complaints with them. I was able to get a hardcover much cheaper than I normally would be and it didn't take long to get to me so very happy with that and then I donated the book to the library so that if other people wanted to read it, there would be at least one copy in the system now. This book is a high fantasy. Some people might consider it an epic fantasy, but I think it's more of a high fantasy that follows four characters. Our, one of our characters is named Levin, and she is a herald, which is a soldier that was created to fight for the Starlight Imperium Empire, which is basically Rome, if you want to think of it that way. The heralds have been on campaign for the last eight years, and finally that campaign has come to an end. The Starlight Imperium is no longer on campaign at the moment. There are very few areas left that have not been blessed by the the Imperium and so far there's a brief moment of peace. Levin now no longer has to fight for the Empire. She's free to reclaim her life as she wishes it and so she doesn't really know what to do with herself initially because she's been fighting for the past eight years. And the thing about heralds is that they have no memory of their past. Whoever they were or whatever they did, they don't remember it. Their memories were wiped in the process that turned them into heralds and how that works is they have Titan ore fused into their flesh basically and titans are these beings or creatures that are very old and very powerful and at one point they were worshipped as gods by the humans. Most of those titans are now dead. Suddenly Levin begins to have flashbacks of what she believes to be her life before she became a herald and these flashbacks are becoming increasingly frequent and she doesn't know what they mean but she sees griffins in these flashbacks and griffins are some of the few remaining heralds and they can only be found on the island of Brittletain which is basically Britain. The map even looks just like Britain. So Levin sets off to Brittletain to try to find the answers as to who she was in her past life and why she's having these visions. Along the way in Brittletain she is accompanied by Epona who is the daughter of Queen Brutica who is basically Boudica and Epona is one of her daughters and Killian who is a Druin and the Druin are basically like these Druids. They're men and women that have curling horns coming out of their foreheads which is interesting and kind of cool. Their purpose is to maintain the Wildwood open and close safe passages through the Wildwood and basically commune with nature and maintain that delicate balance. Killian has been sent to accompany Levin against his will by the Druidnon, which is the head of the Druid Order. He is a large bear who is also one of the few remaining Titans as well. And Killian is having a hard time fitting in with the other Druid. He's having a hard time following the rules. And so the Druidnon, for whatever reason, sends him on this mission to accompany Levin. And Killian is initially not that fond of this idea, but he goes where he's sent. The other character that we follow is named Kaito, and he is an envoy of the Starlight Imperium, and he is sent to accompany a woman named Gynid Tylee, who is responsible for creating the Heralds in the first place. The Imperium needs more Titan bones in order to get the ore to fuse to make more Heralds, and Tylee thinks that there is some that they can find, but it's located in one of the countries that is not under Imperium control. So Kaito and his assistant Belize, who is like this orphaned street urchin that he took in and is his assistant, they accompany Tai Li to this unblessed land in the search of more Titan bones. I wasn't sure that I would like this book at the beginning. It had a kind of rocky start, particularly Levin's point of view. She's a soldier and at this point when we just meet her we really don't know her that well and we don't know anything about her and I thought honestly she was going to be one of those stereotypical look at me, I'm a tough woman, I can swear and fight just like everybody else. And I felt like that really wasn't necessary. Those are not traits that convey to me as the reader that you're tough and that you can fight. And luckily Levin proved that she is those things, she's capable of those things, and she doesn't have to swear all the time or drink like a fiend in order to prove it. Maybe that's me just being a little too picky, but she is a warrior 
and she proves that. She has the skills, she's a herald, she's tough, and I really, really enjoyed her character once I got to know her. I think the concept of the heralds is really interesting. They have blue glass wings that they can summon, as well as a big blue glass sword. And so Levin can fly, which is really interesting, and that's something that you come across that often. I really liked Epona's character. She was charming and kind of a comedic relief character. I really enjoyed her, and I really enjoyed Killian and Levin's dynamic. They really don't like each other at the beginning. Obviously, Brutaltain is one of the unblessed lands. It has not yet been conquered by the Empire, and with the Griffins, some of the last living Titans being located there, it's kind of a dangerous land. The Griffins are up in the Scotland area, and so... Nobody really lives up there. The Griffins don't like people. And so Levin is an enemy of Brittletain, and Killian is not fond of her. He doesn't know why they're allowing her to be here, but he has to accompany her. And I really, really liked seeing their relationship grow. The other character that we follow is named Yinnis, and she lives with her talent sister, Turuk, who is a Griffin. Yinnis was abandoned as a baby near the border between the human lands and that of the Griffins, and she was discovered by two Griffins who took her in and raised her as their own, despite the fact that this is highly unusual. Griffins don't like humans. They view them as prey, and under normal circumstances, Yinnis would have been killed, but she was spared because one of the Griffins had a feeling that she has a role to play. She's connected to them somehow. So she has grown up through all of her childhood and into her teenage years living with Griffins. She's never even seen another human being, and she doesn't like to think of herself as a human. She thinks of herself as a Griffin, albeit she doesn't have talons and she cannot fly. She's ground stuck, as they say, and of course the other Griffins have opinions on this. They don't really like her. They think she's she's weak, they don't know why she's allowed to stay with them, but she is, and Taruk is her griffin sister, and they live together, and they're forced to leave their home and find a place to live when they're exiled from the griffins that they're living with. And it's very clear from the beginning that this is going somewhere. I thought that the beginning of the book was quite slow, and some of the negative reviews criticized this pacing as well, but I felt like this was going somewhere. Each of these characters and their plot lines and timelines and the locations where they are they're all connected and they're all leading to something and I trusted the process and it did take a while to get there but when it got there wow this book actually had a plot twist that I did not see coming which is so refreshing because it happens so very little and once it happened I looked back and I thought mm, ah the author laid the seeds for this so it was really clever that the author set this up and it was very clear that this was planned from the beginning but I actually did not pick up on it so that was very interesting and it's very satisfying how the various characters and their timelines and circumstances are brought together into one place this is the first book of a duology the second book comes out in November I believe and I don't know how long it will take for me to get a hold of it I don't know if it will be available for sale in America immediately it certainly won't be at my library so I will have to probably buy a copy of that as well but I don't really mind because I really did like this book. It was so different and so refreshing and it took a while to warm up to some of the characters particularly Levin but once I did I loved her. I love how fierce she is. I love that she has to overcome these obstacles that are put in her way and even though she's a really powerful herald it's not a guarantee that she's going to win every fight or that things are just going to go her way so the fact that she's really powerful is not like overpowered or anything. It's not a guarantee. It doesn't take away the sense of suspense or anything. So overall, I just really liked this book. And now I really want to find out what happens in book two, because it's kind of a cliffhanger at the end of book one. And I'm a little concerned. I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, this book is definitely very different. I've not read anything like it in a long time. I enjoyed seeing griffins. Um, they can speak. They're sentient beings, but they're very much animalistic and fierce, and they really don't like people. So I loved Griffins as a teenager when I was in high school. I wrote a short story about Griffins and I doubt I'll ever do anything with that, but it was really interesting to see Griffins in this book and just things that you don't really see every day in fantasy books. So if you're looking for something different, if this at all sounds like it might be of interest to you, I highly recommend it. And of course, if you have any questions about this book that I did not answer, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And if you happen to have read this book, let me know what you thought of it. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. My name is Rachel Terry. I'm the author of Four Young Adult Books, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!